purchase at queenbeing.com where we help you to discover, understand, and overcome life with a narcissist. If you are struggling to understand anything related to narcissism, head over to queenbeing.com. Or if you are seeking coaching help, check out the link in the description below. You can also find information there about group coaching if that's something that you're interested in. Today I'm talking about how to best help someone that you might know who is in the process of trying to leave a narcissist. If that sounds good, hit subscribe and we will get started. We have a friend or a loved one or someone that we are aware is in a relationship or struggling with a relationship that feels toxic, especially if they suspect a narcissist is their partner. It can be really hard for them to break free. Leaving a narcissist basically because of the trauma bonds alone is one of the hardest things to go through related to ending relationships. If you've been there, you likely want nothing more than to help anyone in your life that's struggling with the same thing. At times it may feel like you don't really know how to help as your friend or loved one is grappling with the cognitive dissonance and the possibility of being unable to make the break. So let's start with a few things when you're trying to help someone that you should not do. Things that are not helpful for people living in toxic relationship, relationships, such as being blamed for things that go on or being shamed or being told things like it takes two to tango. Remember that when people are with narcissists, they are most likely feeling highly triggered, sensitive, and when it comes to their own sense of worth and trusting their own, uh, their own knowing of what's right and wrong for themselves, they are feeling confused. Okay, so don't expect the person to just get over it. Don't expect them to understand what you're saying and take it at face value and be able to act upon it. It takes a lot of patience and listening and to support someone through a situation when they're in a relationship with someone very toxic. Try to be as neutral as you can about the situation. What I mean by being neutral about the situation is even though you may feel infuriated and you may feel like just get out or this person is toxic, try to remain as neutral as you can about the, sit about the other person because when your friend or loved one is um, with a toxic person, there's a thing that happens where they can feel defensive or feel the need to protect and defend the other person. Oh, well, they had a bad childhood or, oh, well, they just have a hard time with this or, you know what I'm saying? And we've all done it if we've been there where we start making excuses for the narcissist and that doesn't help a person to see what's really going on. So just if you, if you feed the negativity by saying, oh, they're a jerk and blah, 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 the things we know, right? Um, it's not exactly useful to the person in their defensive, possibly defensive state toward the narcissist. Because remember, they're in a confused state of cognitive dissonance. They may know that what's going on doesn't feel, doesn't seem right, but what they feel is like it's their fault or they need to fix it or something's going on and then start defending the, that person. So if you become, if you wanna be an ally to them, just stay as neutral as you can about the situation, um, at least during the beginning of helping them. Getting too negative toward the narcissist may set them into a state where they don't know how to trust anyone and don't know how to feel safe talking to you. In other words, they may even feel guilty for, for staying. So another thing is don't take the pain and the struggle of your friend or loved one. Don't take it on as your own. Don't try to fix it. All you're there for is to offer support. It's a really difficult thing, thing to just sit and listen, but try to do that as much as you can. And do, um, if you can't do that or if the situation seems dangerous for them please direct them toward a professional that can help them such as a therapist or a life coach because they are going through something that may actually need the professional help so let's talk about some of the things to do one of the thing is to be a good listener and offer less advice when you think you might want to if that makes sense try to direct them towards someone such as a coach or a therapist who has training in this type of thing Help them to research narcissism though. Help them to research things like toxic relationships. In fact, even researching what healthy relationships look like can help someone see the difference between their relationship and what's, what they should have in their life. Do this without pushing them into hearing things that they don't, aren't ready actually to hear, if that makes sense. You can give them information without forcing the information on them and ask them if the research is wanted. Another thing to do is to remind them that it is not their fault and that they are not to blame for the actions of the toxic person. 
So you're likely gonna have to listen to many months, if not years of your friends struggling and suffering within a toxic relationship. It takes patience and not getting too invested in the situation personally. That can help you to just stay a little bit removed. I know it's difficult, especially if you've been here. Just your presence though can be very useful to someone. People come out of this in their own time and you cannot force anyone to leave. You have to remember that. If a person has already left and they are struggling with the trauma bonds and talking constantly about the ex, remember that this is totally normal for someone who has been in a relationship that is toxic. Direct them toward coaching again or therapy. And I keep saying that because for some people, it really, having a neutral third party that knows the ins and outs of this stuff can really be helpful. If you're trying to help them on your own or you're just, you know, you're hanging out with your friend and trying to talk to them, remember that even if you've been there, that person may need their own space and time in order to fully understand and grasp what's gone on. So again, patience. So allowing them the space they need to grieve is another thing. There's a lot of grief in leaving and sometimes there's still a lot of grief even years later. It takes a while to process and, and, and go through the healing from a toxic relationship. There's a lot of loss and confusion involved. So allow your friend or loved one the space they need to grieve and don't expect them to be their happy selves again just because they got rid of a toxic partner. The point here is that you can support someone the best by listening, by being present, and by helping them find information, but you can't make someone leave and you can't, you can't force someone to understand what they're living with. I have heard of people who, who see it in their friends' relationships and they want so badly to expose the narcissist or get their friend to understand what's happening to them or family member, whatever it is. The narcissist is such a manipulative person that the confusion that this person is feeling on the receiving end of the toxic relationship is going to prevent them often from moving beyond that narcissist. So, and the one thing that I hear people say often as well when they talk to me about this is that they lost all their friends. People got sick of listening to it. So you see, it's a, it takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of, of um, maybe redirecting the conversation to something enjoyable so that you guys can have a good time. Sometimes it's it's listening and then not doing anything about it that helps people because you can't do it for them, right? And sometimes also sharing your own experience if the person is ready can be helpful, but be careful there because remember that what the person is going through, they're also in a sort of denial about most likely or a sort of have a cognitive block because of the way trauma bonds work. So gently telling part of your story without it being too triggering or too activating for the person. I think what worked best for myself was somebody just saying, wow, Elise, that doesn't sound right. After relaying something when I was upset to them, they said, Lisa, that doesn't sound right. And it sounds like they're being sort of abusive to you. It made me step back and think about it for a second because up till that point I was thinking things were my fault. Does that make sense? So it was not that they did a whole lot. They said one simple thing and then went on with a different conversation. But it hit me in a way that I actually took it in and that's when I began the research. So you see, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to handhold someone all the way through this. It doesn't mean you have to be there for them. In other words, don't take them on as a project. You know, just keep going on with your life, but it's sometimes a very simple pointing something out when they tell you something with loving, compassionate understanding and no blame that can help someone. Okay, I hope this helped. This was a question that was asked. If you guys have any questions for me, I am gonna start doing a Q&A live stream on Fridays. Ask questions in the comments below if you have any. Um, I can try and help you with that. Otherwise, I will see you next time. You guys take care and check us out over at queenbeing.com. Bye-bye.